Next into the tank, a financial entrepreneur hoping to bring the crowds to property development. Hi Sharks, my name's Dave Lovato. I've come to the tank today to try and secure seed funding for my startup, Crowd Property Capital, CPC. I'm looking for $80,000 for a 20% stake in the business. CPC is an innovative peer-to-peer -peer lending platform that uses technology to allow investors to loan funds to borrowers on fixed terms. The beauty of the CPC model is it cuts out the traditional middlemen being the banks, resulting in a better deal for both investors and borrowers. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is a relatively new concept in Australia. However, overseas, markets are thriving. In China, the peer-to-peer -peer lending market was $100 million in 2010. In this year alone, that figure has ballooned to 20 billion. I've come to the tank to try and get a shark on board with my business to provide it with a platform for legitimacy and trust. I feel that's very important in this type of market and space. I'm also looking for one of, one of you guys, the sharks, to be the lead investor in the first few loan offerings, to provide trust and legitimacy in the business and allow the other smaller investors to come on board to the platform. Thanks for your time. Okay, so Dave, that was 80,000 for 20%, so you're valuing your business at 400,000. That's right. Can you just clarify, are these loans for property only and property development, or are they just general loans? No, so my expertise and background is in, is in the property development uh, right. sphere, and it's, and it's essentially a platform for property finance, so developers right. can come to CPC in seeking alternate right. forms of finance okay. to, to develop their project. Dave, good day, I'm Steve Baxter. Where are you from, Dave? I currently work for a property developer in Sydney. Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne. Uh, Sydney. Sydney, excellent. So are the investors providing debt or are they, are they getting equity in return? What is the so instrument? With the 20% of the business for 80,000. No, 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 no. In, in, your, in, in your business, as it is, the person giving the money, that investment, is that coming in as an investment? Or it's, a it's, it's a debt investment, so there's debt a fixed investment. term to that investment, and so just what, like what, a bank. What part of the legislation are you currently governed under then? So at the moment, we can uh, commercialise this business by having sophisticated in investors invest in the platform. So, so a sophisticated investor is someone who earns more than $250,000 a year for the last two years or has more than $2.5 million in net assets, is that correct? That's right, and, okay. and superannuation, self-managed super funds. So basically, people with a certain amount of asset above that level can lend and get involved in mezzanine finance. You're trying to create a platform so that the little guy with smaller amounts of money, maybe one or five thousand dollars, can group together and go alongside them. Is that what you're trying to do? Correct. Let, let's understand your business model. Sure. Walk me through why this is a great idea. Because this platform will give a yield around two percentage points higher than a term deposit in the bank. So you're looking at 4% return? 4 to 5%. And what security are you going to give the small investors on that loan? They'll be mezzanine finances, won't they? So they won't be first mortgage, they'll be well, second or third. It will probably be second or third mortgage because we don't have the and size. And you want to give someone 4% return on a mezzanine type loan? That's terrible. What are the MES lenders getting? They're getting between 17 and 25%. And you want to give four? That's, that is, that's shocking. David Lovato is looking for a shark to invest in his platform, offering crowd-funded property investment. This platform will give a yield around two percentage points higher than a term deposit in the bank. But the rate of return is under the spotlight. You want to give someone 4% return on a mezzanine type loan. That's terrible. The reason it's terrible, they're getting between 17 and 25%. And you want to give four? That's, that is, 
that's shocking. The banks are, you, there's nothing going to go wrong there, nothing's moving there. And then you get to Mez, which what Mez is... Mezzanine, is it's called Mezzanine. Mez, mezzanine Finance. Mm -hmm is that you're the second person. So you're the highest risk. So if that building falls down or they go broke, the, f the banks come in and go, we're the first mortgage, we get all the security, and then you've basically got nothing. That's so, right. So that's why you get a better return on that because it's higher risk. And, and I don't doubt that the investment is a higher risk and that's why you get a higher interest rate. No, 4% Every... is not a higher interest rate. I didn't say 4%. Every, every loan will have a different structure and some of those loans will, will be secured. You said the sharks that invest, you want them to co-invest, so not only do we put money into this deal, but we have to put money into the first two or three property deals as well, do we? Into the first few loans to and get... what the... returns will we get on those? Depending on the deal, but it would be, you know, a 6% to... It just, it just depends on the lines. So, so Dave, I, I'm, a, I'm a shark, yep. but I'm starting to feel like a guppy. Because quite simply, I, I am a sophisticated investor. Yep. I actually have backed two developers into venture notes earning 14% this year. If I said yes to you today, and I said I want to, and so we're going to do a property tomorrow, yep. you can't do it unless it's a sophisticated investor. You can't do the model that you want to do, is that correct? Right today. Correct, so we haven't reached commercialisation yet. So you're pitching to us something that you can't do legally right now? We can can do it right no, now no. with a sophisticated no. investor. No, stop. Because what you're pitching for us is a small investor. You came out and said you want a whole lot of small investors to invest with sophisticated investors, right? That's what you want, so that's what you pitched. So what you're saying now is you can't do it today, what you pitched. With the retail investors? Yes or no? No, not with the retail investors. I just want to know, do you need a financial services licence? You do, yes. Right, and have you got that licence? No. I'll... Dave, I'm going to tell you where I'm at, mate. You, yeah. you, you, you literally, the biggest thing I wrote down here was legitimacy and trust. You are tiptoeing through an absolute minefield and you want us on your back. In fact, you want to be on our backs. That's the worst part, right? And I think I just stood on a pressure plate. I want to keep my foot. I'm out. Thank you very much. OK, thanks. You're playing in a world that is very dangerous. People use their superannuations, they use their life savings to invest it in property, and you need to take this very, very seriously. I find this pitch quite frightening. You have no licence. You're pitching a business that you cannot legally start, and you need to take people's life savings and what they do very seriously. Mate, I'm out. So, Dave, to pull this off, you fundamentally got to be better than the market at picking the right property developments to invest in. Have you done a lot of property developments that have made a lot of money? I work for a large uh, property developer. Um, have you personally used your own judgment to pick and package property developments and made money? Not as my own business, no, okay. as an employee. All right, well, I'm out too. So you're not working in this business, you're working for someone else? That's right. OK, so this is a dream. Yeah, I... I... Or a nightmare. I'm really challenged by you requesting our reputations. My reputation is worth too much. I'm out. No problem. Thanks, mate. What really concerns me about your model is you want the little guy to take a risk. And that's what really upsets me. It's what governments are for, to protect the little guy. So I'm out. <clears throat> Thanks, Dave. They felt that the, the business was way too risky. Obviously, I didn't go for it, but I, I strongly believe in, uh, in crowd investing and uh, going to try and continue on and, uh, and see where things end up. 
My name is Richard Plozai. I'm from Brisbane. I'm a mechanical engineer designer slash inventor. I've been inventing all my life. A bicycle has not changed for 200 years, and I've set myself a challenge, uh, believing that it could be made more efficient and more enjoyable. I'm happy to say that I did su succeed, and I have uh, my product to prove it. Good day, all. Um, my name is Richard Plozai. I represent Tropo Bicycle. And I'm pitching for the investment of $5 million. In return for the equity of 49%. What's it right then? The investment is 100% financially secure, risk-free, and the projected return is $5 million by the year 2020. I'm sorry. Was that $5 billion? billion? $5 billion, yes, $5 billion. Inventor Richard Plozay has blown the sharks away by asking for a $5 million investment in his reinvented bicycle company. The investment is 100% financially secure, risk-free, and the projected return is $5 billion by the year 2020. I'm sorry. Was that $5 billion? billion? Five billion, yes, five billion. So we're going to turn five million into five billion? Yes. In how many years? By the year 2020. Risk-free as well. Risk-free? Risk-free. Wow. So our take on that would actually be uh, a bit under 2.5 billion. This reinvented bicycle goes faster, with less effort, provides better exercise and bodybuilding benefits, enhance comfort, safety, and enjoyment of the ride. It also has a turbocharger for rapid bursts of speed. And it will be the fastest street bike in the neighborhood. And after that, the Tropo Raisa will win Le Tour de France. Also consider this. 80% efficient traditional bicycle against 100% efficient and faster tropo bicycle. I've done all the calculations. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. And to put it simply, the traditional bicycle is obsolete. And the Australian tropo bicycle is the bike for the riders of the future. Richard, I just want to clarify exactly what the product is. So is it the pedals that you've put on an existing bike? Yes, yes. It, it is up to here. As you can see, it's like a traditional bicycle. But please note that this bicycle pedal is the actual invention. Well, I want to have a crack at this. Be my guest. <laughs> this should be interesting. Yeah, this would be hilarious. Can we duck for cover at this point? If you know how to ride the bike... Feels awful. Hang on, what? I don't know how to ride a bike. <laughs> Have you got wait, his, has wait, it got his feet Let right me finish, place? let me finish, please. If you know how to ride the bike, your natural tendency is to go in the circular motion. And it's confusing you here, because you go down and you try to push it further. Yeah, I'm very confused. OK, let's uh, line up. <laughs> you're, pointing, you're pointing at us. Oh, oh shit. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Does it feel like $5 billion, mate, or what? <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's a, it's a funny thing. But once, once you get it, 
I think you actually start going faster. Yes, oh, yes, got exactly, it. exactly. It's bike like is... riding a bike. Can you stop? Yeah, well, I want a wheelie. I'm stuck. I just keep going round and round. <laughs> oh, that's good. There we go, thank you. Thank yeah, you. that's an interesting feel. Richard, I have never before heard a pitch that you invest money, you get 100% financially secured, it's risk-free, and the Tour de France guaranteed to win. In four years, the whole business is going to be worth $5 billion. You sound intrigued. I sound perplexed, and I sound as if I'm having a um, dream. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. I'm giving you 100% uh, security on it. How? The 1,000 times return. Once this type of a bicycle starts winning cyclic tournaments, Use your imagination. Yeah, I don't believe you can enter the Tour de France. You can't enter a recumbent bicycle in the Tour de France. Did you know that? In a recumbent where you sit back? Yes. You yes, can't I know enter a recumbent one. because they, they'll win because they're heaps more efficient. So that's like, why you... Like, so... Sorry, I'm sorry. No. Oh, sorry. I was Go trying on. to answer uh, your uh, issue. Yes, um, just keep quiet. Like other... Sorry. Like any other business, there will be... Uh, issues that we that I would need to work around. How can we actually get this thing worth $5 billion in four years? It's not such a big number. If you take into account, there were 150 million bicycles sold around the world last year. So for $5 billion, it takes only 5% of the sales. Oh, 5%. We... But people say that with numbers. It doesn't work that way in the real world. Well, it you're doesn't. asking for numbers. I'm sorry, I'm giving you numbers. So how do you fund this great expansion? Money that you, if you want to invest, will go into a trust for 12 months. And during that time, you can withdraw any time. If you don't like what's happening, you can withdraw the money. There is such a thing as uh, government uh, business uh, uh, financing. The government finances dollar for a dollar. If I have $5 million today, I'm putting the money in business, I get $5 million as a previous my... As a previous board member of that federal government agency who gave that money out, I can guarantee you it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I can 100% guarantee you that will not get up and it doesn't work that way and it will not go. He's guaranteed your money by having your money set in a bank account and let the government give the $5 million and he uses that and that money's there and to you secure this $5 million. Dollars. And as if the government's going to go, sure. There's a, there's a term for that. It's called fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that, may I ask? Because it, it's, it's a dollar-for-dollar dollar co-investment fund. You have to have a guaranteed fund from an investor. A guaranteed fund means the investor can't take it out. That's, that's, just, that's just how guaranteed funding works. So, yeah, it doesn't work. I honestly don't fundamentally believe your business. I actually think your numbers are crazy. You've asked us to trust you that this is going to work, that you can win the Tour de France with a bike I don't believe is actually eligible. You've actually given us a fundamentally ridiculous investment proposal. I'm out. I think that's fairly definitive. If I can make a small comment, uh, a, a similar story was with the mobile telephone. The idea got rejected everywhere, so... Richard, for entrepreneurs, the worst lies you can tell are the ones you tell yourself. I don't want to waste any more time. It's a ridiculous valuation, just preposterous, but I'm out. I'm a firm believer if something sounds too good to be true, it's never true. I'm out. I need to mention, I have a presentation on YouTube. Richard, the amount of money that you've asked for is assuming that you've got your business problems and understand your business all sorted out. I also have to mention that uh, I've had uh, um, a lot of experience uh, riding the bike along the beaches of Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, and I've seen the reaction of people and how they approach me and how interested they are. Richard, I look forward to seeing your journey, but I'm out. Thank you. Look, I, I love the fact 
that you're having a go. You're an inventor, you're a radical thinker. I have invented other things before that. I have invented self-cleaning toothbrush, for example, but I was not able to sell it. Have you sold one single bicycle? Yes, I sold around 20 bicycles. 20 in Australia? Yes. yes. What did you sell them at? At $2,600. What did you buy? What did it cost to make them? Um, about the same months. It cost you $2,600 to make it, and you've sold it for $2,600. At the end of the day, I, I, I think this is the rude position of commercial reality, that you have such a long way to go, and you're asking so much in terms of the valuation of your company, um, I can't go there. So where I'm sitting, I'm out. Thank you for your support. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Bye. Best Thank of luck, Richard. I believe in my idea. I am confident that uh, this is not the end of my story. If they do regret it, it will be at their own despair. Next into the tank is an entrepreneur who thinks his business is a safe bet. I hope the sharks have brought their fat wallets along. I think I'm going to nail it. Good evening, sharks. My name is Andrew Leary. I'm 53 years of age and I live in Sydney. Tonight we're looking for $390,000 for 10% of the Buckle Me Up enterprise. Thanks for the opportunity to introduce Buckle Me Up, which was conceived by a group of firemen some years ago who had seen firsthand the tragedy of children being killed or injured in car accidents that were unbuckled. There's over one billion cars in the world today on our roads, and 98% of those cars have seatbelt warning devices to the front seat. Yet 87%, 87% of cars don't have them in the back seat where our precious cargo travel. Buckle Me Up is a worldwide patented, first ever wireless retrofit seatbelt alarm and safety system that simply clicks on to your seatbelt buckle like an e-tag. Buckle Me Up is paired with your smartphone via a free app that will alert the driver of the car if the person in the back seat unbuckles. Buckle Me Up can also be used in a number of other applications, such as in school buses. So sharks, buckle me up, you'll never look back. There you go. <laughs> hey, well done. Hey, that's nice. Well done, Andrew, and that's uh, valuing your business at $3.9 million, 390,000 for 10%. Wow. So uh, I guess you better show us how it works. Well, what I'd love is to invite two of the sharks to sit in the back seat. So who'd like to come forward? Well, you're little. I'm going in the back seat with Janine. Does buckle me up include shut me up? <laughs> so for the purposes of this exercise, Steve and Janine, they're my children in the back seat. <laughs> I now hit the app. And this will tell me through a green signal that two of my passengers are buckled up. So now, Steve, you're a naughty boy. You've dropped your toy. And without telling Daddy, you have to pick your toy up. So now what we see is a visual from my smartphone. Because Janine looks up to her older brother, monkey see, monkey do. So Janine, you unbuckle. And we'll see Janine's also go red. Oh, my god. These kids are out of control. Hey, I like it. Simple. It worked. I can remember driving down 30, 30 years ago with a five-year-old son in the back, and I turn a corner and suddenly the back door of my car opens, and my son, who's five years of age, has taken his seatbelt off because his hat has fallen on the floor. He grabs hold of the seatbelt. I'm hitting the brakes and I get out of the car and he's under the back wheel and it's this far away from going over it. And I will never forget that, that vision. Scary. This is a great product. There's, there's an amazing problem out there. Yeah, 100%. Hi, Andrew, how are you? Good, thank you. 
is this product market ready and does it work 100% of the time? This product is 100% market ready uh, and we have, have it fully accredited. What have you spent to date? Well, to date we've spent over $2 million, which was in my home, which I've sold to put into this business. Wow. OK. Hello, Vicar. That's a lot. Do you have any sales so far, Andrew? Yeah, we've got a, an order from a large bus company. We have ordered 200 um, buses to be fitted out. So how much is that in dollars? $1.9 million. Wow. So are we investing in the uh, everything? We invest in the operating company, the IP. Is it, is it a whole group or are there parts that sit outside the investment? Okay. What you're investing is, is Buckle Me Up, PTY, LTD, yep. which has the sole and exclusive licence to use the patent worldwide for a seatbelt application. So we don't own the licence. We don't... We have the use of it. We don't own the IP. So you own the patents. Yep. So that's in one company. Yep. And then another company is licensed, which is called Buckle Me Up, to use it. So this one is paying royalties to that one yes. to use it. Yes. Correct? Yes. yes. How much is that? It's a per, um, per purchase. Yeah. At this point, to start off with, it's 5%. So who owns this company? M myself. OK. So you're offering us 10% of another company. Correct. That's not going to fly, right? No. You, you're basically asking us to pay you for this, but get no actual effective ownership of it. And you've taken a 5% clip. It's actually, it's actually a poor deal. So in actual fact, we could together do a deal. We could be burning cash 100 miles an hour. So we could be losing money and you're going, that's OK, I'm still making 5%. You could be making millions and we could be losing money. The reason why I didn't put a hold of is because of the uncertainty associated with going forward with the yet to be completed. No, no. You thought that you could take money off the top line and you'd be OK, and the risk is with us. You sit on the beach, you do nothing for it, you get 5% of the sales, and we take all the risks. And remember, I've got 90% skin in it as well. So if you're hurting at 10%, I'm hurting at 90%. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're fine. But guess what? But you've but got guess what? Have... No, guess you're what? not. Because right. you've still got your 5% off the top. So what you're basically saying is you need to feel sorry for me, right? But this is a heart. The smallest one in the world playing for you, right? For your, heart, for your broken heart. That doesn't matter. This is investment, right? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to do that to us? Why are you trying to do that to an investor? Why be tricky? Whenever a tricky structure gets set up, the first thing in my spidey senses go, something's being hidden here. I'm, uh, someone's out to do me a disservice. Andrew, I, I can tell you where I am at. In business, I think if things are really struggling and they're, they're just they're grinding its gears, often there's a reason. And in this case, I actually think the reason might be you. You've got an unusual structure. And just looking at you and listening to you, I asked myself, could I work with you? And I'm sorry, the answer is no. So for those reasons, I'm out. Um, I'll tell you where I am. When I work with people, I like it all to be nice and transparent and upfront. And if I have to dig for things, I can't work with you. I'm out. Sure. Thanks. Would you sell the whole company? Beg your pardon? Would you sell the whole company? I believe that for me to invest money in this business, I prefer to have a very, very large say. That means owning it. As in the parent company as well? Uh, I'm talking about everything I need to operate this. I'm talking about... Yeah, sure, I'd be interested in selling that. So I'll make an offer for 100% of the business. I'm willing to pay you 1.5 million bucks. Andrew Leary is asking for $390,000 for 10% of his seatbelt safety business. His complex business structure... So we don't own the IP. ..has caused two of the sharks to bow out. But Steve has made an offer of $1.5 million for 100% of his business. I prefer to have a very, very large say. That means owning it.
I, I want to thank, thank you for the offer. I want to see if there are uh, any counter offers. I'm more than happy to for you to entertain the amateur amateur hour down the end there. When I do business with people, it is actually a partnership. This is like a first date, but then we go on a journey together and ultimately we want to get married and create something great. At the core, all business is based on trust. So for this deal, I'm out. Thank you. Three sharks are out, two sharks left. Andrew, I think your product is very relevant, but for me, today, it's not an investment, so I'm out. Thank you. What are you going to do? There's a lot of things to think about, but I understand I'm here to, to consider offers, and Stephen's maybe one. We actually are here to do deals, yep. not just consider them. The clock is ticking here because the more I look at these numbers, I get concerned as why, why haven't, why hasn't this amazing life-saving thing actually done what it's supposed to do? I think his little feet are starting to shake. Right, you're not in this deal. There's been a range of reasons, right, for that, which I don't know yet. Believe in yourself, Andrew. So, Steve, what, what I would uh, accept would be a $2 million, um, 100% take out. If anyone can take this business, it's Steve. I really believe that. And he might even give me a job. But that's for discussion, maybe. No, I'm not going to negotiate against myself. You should have kept one of these four in the game. So uh, if you're at two, we're probably not going to meet. Is that where we're at? Yeah. Mate, I wish you all the best. I'm Thanks. out. Thanks, Steve. Good luck. See you, Andrew. Good I luck. I hope it works. It's a great product. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Wow. <laughs> Andrew, how are you feeling? That was a roller coaster ride in there. Yeah, no, look, it was uh, it was interesting. It got pretty brutal in there at times. How did you handle that? Yeah, look, I tried to, to answer as honestly as I can. Overall, the deal couldn't be done. But that's life. You move on. I think it was a cheeky offer. I don't think it was cheeky. Did you see how quickly he went to sell his whole business? That was a sign, if nothing was. <laughs>